On today's Hobby Hump Day tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make great looking fur cloaks out of green stuff in like 50 seconds. Maybe, maybe a minute. Spiky bits. Make sure you stay in the trenches by becoming a supporter over on Patreon and also scoring yourself some free miniature swag in the process. Subscribe to this YouTube channel. Check out our site, spikybits.com, for all the hot hobby tutorials, news, rumors on all your favorite hobby topics. And head on over to thelongwar.net. That's the home of the battle reports for exclusive content, early access videos, and more. Become a veteran of the long war today. So today we're going to show you how to sculpt, well, not really sculpt, how to use a mold of uh, for green stuff to make cloaks. Now I've got these uh, little fur molds, they make two different ones, there's coarse and fine fur, Marco Art Studios, uh, put these out a few years ago. Now I've heard that they might be out of print, a couple of people have said that on Instagram when I posted up some work in progress pictures. However, there is still something you can do to make your own mold. You would just need an original to kind of base it off of. So if that is the case and you cannot get these, well, there's a pretty simple uh, way to make your own mold using the exact same stuff that you were going to use to make the fur cape out of, and that is green stuff. Just find something that you want to take a mold of, you know, maybe some sort of texture. Um, it could be, you know, a McFarlane figure, you know, or, or something like that, or even something in the Warhams. And all you have to do is just combine your green stuff together like I show you in this tutorial put it down get a nice you know let it dry get a nice mold out of that you gotta you're gonna have to wait for the green stuff to dry it might be four hours it might be eight hours but then you can use that flattened out green stuff as your mold for making your capes and making more than one you know and putting that on the back of you don't even have to use the same section of texture you can just use a, a smaller section so you know there might be some IP stuff there uh, if you use G-Dub's models, but you're not, you know, I don't know, it gets all gray and everything and, you know, that's a whole nother, you know, couple worms, but, you know, I've used green stuff press molds on black tempera symbols, you know, imperial fist symbols, you know, ultramarine symbols before they came out with all that stuff in, you know, these days, you know, from Forge World and stuff, because sometimes you just wanted your stuff to look different and there was no way to do it. So you just make a green stuff mold and boom, you got extra pieces, you know, little flat pieces to throw on the rest of your miniatures and they start looking fresh. Same thing with this, we're working on some Morphang Calvary and uh, this, is the, this is the finished product right here. And I wanted to make a little fur cape on the back and that's the painted one. I kind of, I call it my Craven cape, you know, after Craven the Hunter out of Spider-Man series there. Cause I always thought he was a badass, but it turns out, you know, as you get older and you realize, oh, that guy was actually not a badass. Oh well, but that's kind of the look I was going for because of the whole like winter palette, you know, everything looking nice and cold and everything. That was a great color for it. So I was like, ah, I'll call it my Craven cape, whatever. Eh, it's the childhood coming back all around full circle there. So we're going to jump right into it, but make sure that you remember you can make your own green stuff molds as well as following the tutorial that I put forth after this. So don't get it twisted. It's still something you can do even if you can't find these little RTV rubber molds. And uh, you can check out Hearst. I think it's Hearst molds online as well he's got a whole series of great molds that you can use so a lot of its terrain stuff but some of it can be used for uh, the scale miniatures hobby that we do here as well so uh, enjoy the tutorial So let's do this. So like I said, it's basically like cheating. Here's here's the goods, here's what we're going for. This is a custom converted um, musician for the Morphine Cavalry that my buddy Cy did. And back here you can see they've got fur pelts, right? And I'm like, well, I can't have no buster like thunder tusks and stuff running around the table now, can I? Nope, I gotta <laughs> I gotta have my, my fur pelts on these guys. And here also you, probably, you might notice that there's a, a little bit of um, of white stuff on here. This is that Vallejo plastic putty. If you haven't used this stuff yet uh, to fill gaps, it's pretty much amazing. I'm just waiting on that to dry right there and then I'm gonna uh, scrape it off and uh, you know, it'll be just hard as rock and, and fill that gap up there. So a couple of things you need basically to, to sculpt fur, fur pelts without any formal sculpting knowledge. All I'm, literally all I'm using is an X-Acto blade and a freaking seam scraper and really this is just to kind of like use it as a um, 
almost like a, uh, a tool to just uh, basically not touch the stuff with my hands here. So you want clean hands. Um, I, I, gr I went and grabbed a little bit of water here, and this is mixed with a couple of a uh, couple of squeezes of hand soap because you can see the soap in there, right? And I like to sometimes, you know, I like to get that just a little bit on my hands, just so I'm not accidentally like making stuff stick. And of course, you need some green stuff. Now, if you got this tube. <laughs> Yeah, they look funny. So if you have this tube here of green stuff, it's pretty much terrible. I I, I like the tube for the utility and the, and the price point because you can't beat you know six bucks for like a literally years worth of green stuff here. But trying to pry it out of this stupid plastic piece is like nigh impossible. I feel like so I just have them sealed up in the little baggie over there. Now your mix is going to be about three parts blue stuff here, right? To roughly. I want to say one quarter yellow stuff and obviously this is very scientific I'm totally measuring everything out direct you know big proportions hey that looks like four of those could fit in there I'm gonna go with it so now you have a now you have a choice in your in your hobby life here you can sit here for minutes and minutes and minutes and minutes and mash this together and get a good mix and have it stick to everything and and and, and be all gross or you can put this air quotes non-toxic putty in your mouth and chew it not that I recommend it because it's probably not non-toxic and if you have any sorts of dental work uh, I can't say that it won't mess up your teeth I've had dental work I have a crown put in actually but I am allowed to chew gum at this point so we're gonna see what happens I'm just gonna put it in I'm gonna I'm gonna mush it up it takes a uh, takes less than a minute to get this thing all mixed far shorter than it would take me to sit here and mash this together with my fingers so I'm basically just going to talk to you while I'm chewing this, this gum here. It tastes like stale. Basically, it tastes like stale gum. It's really no big deal there. Now, while that's happening, as you can tell, it's really not that hard. I'm just basically chewing this thing up. Now, here's my my victim here. We got a, uh, a little Mornfang Calvary dude, man. I'll zoom in a little bit and get you off. Oops, that's wider get you a nice front row center here now like I said you can see I've already um, put a lot of them um, uh, seam gap filler here and you can kind of see how it works like right there like basically I'm just getting getting rid of the excess because it's all totally dried and that gap that's left right there this stuff's amazing like everybody should have this in their hobby tool uh, toolbox I feel like because it is just really that good so there you can kind of see so there's gonna be random dabs of this stuff all over uh, the guys I'm working on just because before I went to bed last night, I basically put put some coats of this stuff down, um, you know, to scrape it off this morning because I wanted to make sure I got a nice hard coat. Now you'll notice right here that we don't have that great looking fur cape right back there. Now, I have no doubts in my mind that Cy uh, sculpted this by hand, you know, using a putty knife, you know, just put a block of putty down there. I mean, it looks great. The effect is amazing and I love it, but I don't have that kind of time. And, you know, I think that's one of the things that's good about this channel is I'm so busy, you know, with spiky bits and stuff that, you know, I always want, I, I still want my stuff to look good, but I'm always trying to find the shortcuts. Same thing with a professional painting studio, like Next Level Painting, you know, Kenny over there, he's always on a time crunch, so he's always trying to do stuff in the most efficient manner, but then that trickles down great to some of the viewers out there on this channel because, you know, all y'all got, you know, families, you know, you're doing stuff, you're running around, you're in school, whatever, you know, we're all busy, we're all not really trying to spend that, that one year on a, on a model to enter it in a, in a competition, right? So that's what I really love about the, um, you know, the stuff we do here. So less than a minute, I just chewed this up in my mouth. Again, don't 100% recommend it. It's kind of one of those conundrums, like, do you, uh, <laughs> do you want to eat it? Do you not want to eat it? Do you want to take the blue pill? Do you want to take the green pill or a red pill? But you can tell here, I, or I guess the green pill at this point, it is completely mixed. Like, yeah, it took less than a second, but hey, I don't want to get you in trouble with your, with your dentist. And I surely don't want you to get any sort of, uh, you know, toxin or anything in your body that you might not be able to handle there. So, but if you like stale gum and you want to chew your stuff quick, well, there you go right there. Now I'm going to, you see, I get my thumbprints in it already. So I'm just going to dab my, my fingers off here in a little bit of, a little bit of water. Now the next step, and this is the easiest part of all, is basically you're going to grab a mold. Uh, this is Micro Art Studio. 
Let's see if they have that. No, just MicroArt Studio, www.MicroArt Studio right there. They sell two different versions of this. This is the larger fur version. There is a smaller fur version, which may be good for, you know, like stuff like Space Wolves, like smaller Astartes uh, kind of scale things, I feel like. But for this, um, this is pretty much a good size, I feel like. So all we're going to do is I actually don't need this. This is probably two dudes worth, which we're going to do <laughs> two dudes here in a second, right? <laughs> And I'm just gonna flatten this all out. I want it to be a little bit chunky. I don't want it to be like my mold. I don't want it to be like a cape of fur. I kind of want it to be like it's, I guess what's the term? I, I guess a little, a little on the chunky side, like like it's a, it was a great piece that they killed. So basically all I'm gonna do is just, boom, just put this here on the mold in a kind of a random fashion, right? Grab a little bit of that that water so I'm not messing anything up and I'm just kind of gently pressing down with my finger here into this mold now you can do this a lot of different ways you can wait for it to cure uh, you can lay it out you can basically do this and let it cure in the mold and then pull it out but I like the elasticity of it if I just kind of mash it down a little bit get a nice good pull um, and then kind of pull it out and put it onto the model I'm working with basically right so I'm gonna carefully kind of pull this out here. Well, sort of carefully, mostly carefully in a, in a semi-professional pro painted manner here, we're gonna pull this out. Maybe I should have, it's funny. It wasn't this hard to work with last night. Okay, so there's that. So you can see I got a really great looking texture in there kind of mash it up at the top right here so I'm not I'm not 100% happy with it but we can definitely make this look now the thing to keep in mind is take a look at this this fur right this is actually upside down because fur goes like that that's a fur pelt because the little fur pieces would you know gravity and rain and such would basically have it going like that so what I want to do is now I want to take this and I want to put it on the back of one of my models so we're going to throw this aside and there's my model and he gets a cape so we're just going to kind of very gently so i'm not mushing the detail see that kind of not exactly what i wanted it was it's kind of like more of a fur cape kind of thing right there at this point um but it, it gets it gets the coverage that i'm looking for i guess but it's a little too big because you're going to notice like right here where his pants are I kind of don't want it going all the way up to there. So I'm going to get in here with my X-Acto blade and I'm dabbing everything in this water off camera because I don't really want, um, I want my tools to kind of basically pull, you know, and be able to cut through all this stuff and not like mash it up, which I'm basically doing right here. I'm just kind of going through the, why is this not catching? So I'm just basically going through the belt area right here and that should have cut it all so we're just gonna peel it nope gotta go a little a little bit harder in the paint that's fine got no problems i just don't want to cut the model but you just gotta kind of fill it out like how much pressure to put on it that you're actually hurting things versus not hurting things and there it is so now you're gonna have a little bit of extra pieces and i'm gonna actually gonna rework that in my mouth here for a minute now the conundrum is we kind of got this stuff everywhere, right? And it looks good, but it needs to be, it needs a little bit of work. And that's where this X-Acto blade comes in right here, right? So we're just basically gonna kind of make it just pulling it down and such, just to make it look like it's actual fur and anything that's just too big, we're just, you know, just gonna rip it off. This is super easy. This is just kind of like a to taste. I mean, you could easily just keep it here like in tatters if you wanted um, and then paint paint that all up. That would be super easy too and that would look dope. Now, I'm gonna take my finger and I'm gonna dab right around here because I still want, I want this to kind of adhere to the surface. And I went a little too hard in the paint and kind of mushed it down a little bit, but that's okay. We've got this handy dandy X-Acto blade um, which we can definitely, I don't know why this thing's losing focus so much. Maybe it's the super crazy paint palette I have underneath it. Anyways, 
apologize for that. We got new lighting in here too, which is really cool. I hope um I hope the video is looking a little bit better for y'all than uh, than normal. So now I'm gonna go up in here where I kind of flattened it out and really just kind of cut in with this tool a little bit, just to make it look, just to give it some depth, you know, because really it's that easy. And just very carefully just getting up in there. Once it's all painted, it's really not gonna be even a real thing. And up here too, like right there. I just don't want there to be any little kind of flat areas. Now it looks like it's draping over the, the little horn here. So I don't want that. And this I actually kind of don't want either. I'm just gonna cut this off completely. Just give it a nice clean, clean break right there. And then I'm gonna kind of tuck it as best I can up underneath. Right there, super easy. This is literally the easiest thing in the history of ever. So there's that one. I mean, it's, it's, it's that easy. You just press it, put it on, in less than five minutes, you're pretty much done for the most part, I feel like. So there's uh, there's the new Morn fan rider, and he's going to go on the back of this bad boy, right? It looks like he clears it. No, uh, nothing, nothing cutting into it, so that's going to be good to go there so he definitely blends in and then I did one of the Stonehorn riders already and that was this guy I did him last night and he was a little bit chunkier uh, you can kind of see and this is dried overnight so you can kind of get the difference between you know what it's gonna look like right now quote-unquote wet and what it's gonna look like a little bit more overnight now I may come back and put an armor plate over that arm right there because it kind of frames up the, the fur uh, really well but uh, I'm pretty happy with this. This was uh, this was super easy, and it really makes the um, it really makes the the whole uh, the ogre theme really pop. You know, like the whole Genghis Khan and these guys. I can't imagine that they just be running around all bare. You know, barebacked and uh, <laughs> barebacked with no fur and uh, nothing to really keep them warm besides their boots. I mean, I guess I guess maybe that's why they eat so much just to stay warm, right? But uh, I, I don't know. I'm not really feeling it. <laughs> But that is pretty much the easiest way to do fur is get you these molds from MicroArt Studios and just kind of go to town on it and uh, just put it all in there. Now there is one other thing I wanted to show you. You can actually do the same thing uh, with you know your putty and such after you lay it all out and then you put it in your mold. You can lay it out on a piece of plastic to kind of dry and then you could actually cut it into shapes because there's actually different opportunities here for that. Like on this guy, like you say you wanted to put, um, say you wanted to put some texture into here, but it's a very specific shape that would be very hard to do. You can wait, you can let it dry, cut it out, and then kind of fit it in there and glue it down. You know what I mean? So you could even do that. That would work for like actual Astartes capes. I mean, it's still got, this is, this is dried overnight. It's still got bend to it. You know what I mean? Like you don't have to worry about that. You're still gonna be able to get it down and around things and kind of glue it over like a marine backpack or something like that. But if you cut it out, you put a little bit of that water mix down, right? Just onto your paper right here, just to kind of, you know, almost like make it a nonstick surface for the stuff and you're good to go right there. So that's how easy it is to do a couple of different things uh, with this fantastic mold from Micro Art Studios. Now, remember there is two different varieties of it. This is the large fur mold, which can also be used for like dead skin and stuff like that as well. So that's it for this one. I hope you enjoyed my hobby tutorial of the week here on another fun, fantastic hobby home day. Deleted scenes, bonus content, and all the interviews and post-game wrap-up videos can be located in the Hall of Veterans on thelongward.net. Visit thelongward.net today and try a week completely free with no strings attached. That's not all. Thelongward.net is also your hobby resource for exclusive early access with an ad-free experience to all your favorite videos. Members of the Hall of Veterans gain early exclusive access to multiple hobby videos.